Hello again. Today we will be speaking about nonlinear free vibration. Okay, I mean we are continuing the topic of the nonlinear vibration. I mean we have oh we have some problems with the blackboard. I see, ah no, there is not any problems. Non-linear uh, uh, vibration, and it's about free oscillations. I mean oscillation without damping and without the excitation this time. Okay, and today we will be considering the simple case of the hanged mass, like I showed you when we were talking about the oscillation of uh, when we are talking about the Galerkin method and again there will be some function s of t which will be the restoring force of that system but this time I will tell you what is the characteristic I mean I will give you the exact form of the, the of that s of s s of x function which is the characteristic of that nonlinear spring okay and we will be considering the simple case where the non-linear spring characteristic is given by the linear part of that component and also we have some non-linear term which makes that that curve is looks like uh, is visible on that uh, figure okay and if we assume some coordinate frame x we see that the governing equation is as follows i mean we have uh, such a thing uh, m times acceleration plus s of x because it will be the negative value of the nearest storing force which should be all, uh, on the right hand side is zero and if we put the exact values of the characteristic components we are getting such and things equals zero and if we divide everything by the mass which is the factor of the highest derivative we are getting such an equation i mean the omega zero square which is the k over m x like in the case of the linear oscillator and here we have again omega zero times epsilon x square equals zero okay and we will be looking for the solution using the galerkin method like last time okay and this time we assume only one component which will be the predicted solution of our nonlinear case okay i mean the x type will be given only by simple a times sine omega t uh, harmonic function it means that we are looking for the solution which is only harmonic process but look i'm not assuming that that omega is exactly the same as omega zero like it was in the case of the uh, linear vibration now i'm assuming that omega is something which is which isn't uh, omega zero which is some unknown parameter which will be uh, which will be our unknown for further analysis i mean it's a let's say some kind of the variable of that problem and we'll be looking for that value during the process of the of the solving of the problem okay and how it works generally we have to use our condition i mean we have to stay we have to formulate our uh, functional which will be for uh, minimization last time it was stated in that form i mean the difference of the operator which acts on the exact solution and uh, on the exact solution and on the uh, simplified or uh, approximate solution and it will be uh, integrated uh, over dt and we remember that for the one element that we are getting um, such a condition sorry we are getting such a condition which is which is zero and from our previous video we know that it give us that it will be two times integral over one period times uh, l of our simplified solution i mean it, this time it will be exactly that value times the component which is connected with the particular amplitude i mean it will be this time sine omega t nothing more the 
there is some difference between our previous video and between that video because this time I'm uh, using only the derivative of the one variable function but it's obvious because we have only one uh, parameter for our optimization problem that is why we can use without any problems use only the derivative of the of the single uh, variable function okay and of course it will be integrated over dt let's try consider a problem I mean for our computations we need to compute that thing I mean we need to compute what will be the value of the operator which acts on the simplified solution I mean we have to put our predicted solution to uh, to our governing equation which is in that case L operator which acts on the X okay I will rewrite my formula I mean it will be the X type double dot for that case plus omega 0 square times x tile plus omega 0 square times epsilon x cube it's of course tile because we are speaking about our predicted and approximated form of the solution okay for our computation we need what is the x tile of course it's the same which we see here I mean here and second step we need the second derivative of that process I mean it will be minus a omega square times sine omega t let's put let's put everything inside our operator and due to that thing we are getting it's a minus a omega square times sine omega t uh, plus ah, plus nothing no yes plus omega zero square times sine omega t because it's only that component plus omega zero square times epsilon times a cube times sine cube omega t such an expression okay now it's quite easy to put everything uh, into our uh, minimization condition but firstly I will try to rearrange our formula a little bit because I will be looking for some common factors in that equation we see that the one common fa factor is a sine omega t but also we have something which will be height here that is why firstly I will try uh, maybe I will use the different color because that one is not especially good that is why firstly I will try to use some trigonometric identity to show you that such an expression uh, contains also the sine omega t component that is why our common factor will be a little bit bigger okay let's try to do it let's try to manage with that it will be sine omega t uh, to the third and due to trigonometric identities we know that it's a 3 over 4 times sine omega t minus 1 over 4 sine 3 omega t you can check it for example on the internet then you will see that it's a, a, there is such an uh, such a trigonometric identity and now our operator L which acts on the simplified solution is as follows I mean we have the minus a omega uh, square I will take it in the braces plus omega zero square uh, oh I forgot about something about something important of course I forgot about the amplitude here I will put uh, it with the red color to emphasize that I forgot about it okay and it will be of course a here common factor mm, let's change the color sine omega t and also we have to put that component I mean we have the omega mm, sorry we have here omega zero square times epsilon times a cube times in the braces 3 over 4 times sine omega t minus 1 over 4 sine 3 omega t okay we can uh, close the brace and look again like I told you we have something which will be 
connected with that component, okay? I mean, that common factor will be a little bit bigger because it will be, uh, it will be increased by that component. I mean, finally, L of X is as follows. I mean, we have the um, omega zero square times A minus A omega squared and also that component, I mean, plus omega zero squared times epsilon times A cubed times three, four. We are closing the brace, parentheses, and here we have the sine omega t and plus that component, component connected with the free sine, omega, sine free omega t, I mean it will be sine free omega t and the contribution of that part is as follows, I mean 1 over 4 times omega 0 square times epsilon times a to the third and let's close the brace. Okay, <clears throat> now we are able to put everything to our uh, functional which is zero because we remember that the ds over dA is uh, zero and from the other hand we see that we have such a thing I mean it will be that entire expression omega zero square times A minus A omega square plus omega zero square epsilon uh, A cube times 3, 4, let's close, uh, and of course times sine omega t, and look, important thing, it will be om sine omega t square. Why? Because there is one sine omega t here, and the second sine omega t is exactly here. And there will be plus the another component, I mean that component, it will be minus 1 over 4 omega 0 square. Or maybe I will uh, switch off the radar. Epsilon A3. And this time, look, it's a sine 3 omega t times sine omega t because it's from our previous formula. And everything will be, will be integrate over dt and over one period. And from the calculus, we know that integral of the product of through one, I mean over one period, uh, of the sine or cosine component with the different arguments will be exactly zero. There is only one situation where such a function cannot be zero or won't be zero if, the, if we have the sine with the same omega. I mean sine omega t over dt. And then such an expression won't be zero. What does it mean? It means that during the integration that entire component will disappear. We will be only dealing with that part. Okay? It means, and second thing, look, that function, that part is, isn't, uh, isn't depending on the value of t. It means that we can treat that thing as a common factor and constant factor and we can put it outside integral. That is why, as a result, we have such a thing. I mean, after the equal sign, we have that part minus a omega square plus omega zero, plus of course omega zero epsilon a cube times three over four. Let's close the parenthesis times two times integral of sine square omega t dt over one period. We know that such a function won't be zero, but entire expression will be zero because it's visible here. For emphasize that function, I'll put zero also uh, on the right hand side. What does it mean? It means that that component cannot be zero because it's not zero. That two cannot be zero because it's two, it's not zero. It means that only that thing 
can be zero. It means that we are getting the condition which show us what is dependency between the A and our unknown, our variable which we are looking for, and amplitude. It means we have the such an expression which is equal zero. Now, in easy way, we can simplify everything by A and we are getting that omega square is equal, because if I put it on the right hand side, we are get that omega square is equal to omega zero square plus omega zero square epsilon times A squared times 3 over 4. It means that in the case of the nonlinear vibration, there is some relationship between omega and the amplitude. It means that the frequency of the nonlinear vibration depends on amplitude, which is exactly different in, in case of the linear vibration where the natural frequency was, let's say, invariant of the entire process. If we are talking about how the dependency looks like, it will be such a function. If we put on the x-axis omega square, if we put on the uh, y-axis a, we are getting approximately such a thing. I mean, for the amplitude zero, we are getting exactly omega zero square, and from the point of view of the function omega of a, we are getting the parabolic relationship. I mean, it will be such a thing in approximation. Of course, there will be also the part here, but we are, we are liking to uh, think about the relationship uh, of A as a positive value. That is why we are only considering that part. And depends on the value of the epsilon, we are getting the different inclination or bending of that curve. Okay guys, as you see, the only right vibration not especially difficult. See you next time, we will be speaking about the excited vibration.